again, he's an undrafted guy with no guaranteed money. He's already cut in June. But you had a group of fans that are just like, oh, my God, how do you cut Jamie Newman? He's undrafted. They didn't give him one penny to come in here. He was the easiest cut in the world. John McMullen and Jody McDonald. Yes, I'm here for the start of the show. One last time, I'll apologize for yesterday. I, I actually figured out, Jay Mac, I set my alarm, but the problem was I set it for a midday nap, which I had done the day before, and mm-hmm. I turned it on. It wasn't going to go off till 1 o'clock in the afternoon. That doesn't work when you got to be up at 8 o'clock to do birds 365. I'm glad to be here for the entire two hours today. Can you put up with me for two hours today? We'll see. I think so. We've done this. How many shows we've gotten off that? We've done so many shows now. I feel like it's second nature. We're right. going to get through the two hours. I, there's just how many times are we going to disagree in those two hours? I think this is week 10. Yeah, so, so we're we're rolling. We're, we're sneaking up on our 50th show tomorrow. Tomorrow will either be our 45th or our 50th show. Oh, but we had a couple of days off for uh, Memorial Day. Memorial yeah, Day. Back yeah. to those two in. So yeah. tomorrow will either be our 43rd or our 48th we got to have a big blowout for number 100. i got to figure out what day that is. Our and first 100 it, days, yes. Yeah. Uh, they, yeah. Everyone tracks that, and uh, that tells you what you've actually accomplished. Sander, that's your homework. Figure out when number 100 is. Figure out the date. we got to get that ready. we got to get Joe Krause to give giveaways. we got to go the whole nine yards. <laughs> We got a lot to do because we got a summer to kill before the Eagles actually get back out there. I'm getting the ahead field. of myself. Getting <laughs> ahead of myself. Well, we appreciate that. And uh, yeah, the Eagles gave you a little something, something to sink your teeth into the last couple of days. Yesterday, it was offensive assistant coach. Or excuse me, yesterday was defensive assistant coaches. The day before that, it was offensive assistant coaches, except for Jeff Stoutman. He didn't get to hang with his offensive guys, so they threw him out in front of the defensive guys yesterday. And I would say he was probably the star of the show of all the guys you talked to. So we'll start there. Uh, Jeff Stoutland, I'll give him this much. He's looking forward. He's not looking backward. Uh, They they tried to get him to look backward yesterday, and he wanted no part of it whatsoever. He's only worrying about what's going forward with this football team. Yeah, understandably so. You know, Jeff was sort of the main event. He was the last guy talking of the assistant coaches. I think the Eagles kind of knew this is this is the guy. This is the veteran guy. This is the guy who's been here. By the way, you know, forget about Doug Peterson. He was here under Chip Kelly. So, you know, that's sort of the NFL. Once you get a good offensive line coach, you hold on to him like grim death. I don't care how many times you 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 change head coaches. If you can get him back, you can get him back. And you remember, Jody, way back uh, during the hiring cycle, there was a report, I think Bruce Feldman put it out uh, from The Athletic, is one of the best in the business when it comes to covering college football, saying Jeff was going back to Alabama. Right. And so when when Bruce does that, it's pretty much a done deal. So the Eagles managed to convince him to stay. Uh, I think that's very big. We talked about if this team's going to overachieve – it's going to be because of the offensive line, bottom line. Uh, and they have to figure out left tackle. They have to cross their fingers for the health uh, of of the rest of the veteran players. But, you know, we've talked to, in the offseason, we've talked to Jason Kelsey, Jordan Mailata, Andre Dillard, Lane Johnson, Brandon Brooks. The one thing they all agreed on is, man, thank God we have Stout back. So that kind of tells you the respect of his players. But I do want to bring up, and I think the Jeff McClain question is the one that kind of blew up on social media because Jeff asked um, Jeff, Jeff asked Jeff Stoutlin uh, of what happened with, with Doug Peterson and the organization and Carson Wentz. So, number one, I, I want to say the question was fine. Sure. For all these people saying, oh, you, why are you asking about? The question was fine. Now, the problem with Zoom is everybody gets to watch in. You don't know what the guy is working on. He might want a no comment. You might want a veteran coach on the record. Essentially, you got a no comment, but Jeff did it. Stoutland did it in his style. And, you know, the gesticulations and, you know, he mentioned he loved Jeff McClain. I I thought it was ironic, Jody, that he went, I don't know. 
I don't know. <laughs> and then at the very end, if people stuck around, he said, maybe after I retire, we'll do a podcast and I'll tell you all about it, essentially. He knows. He knows what went on. He also was smart enough and political enough to say, okay, that's not my lane. Right. I'm going to go in a different direction. But I, I, my pet peeve, and you probably have figured this out, Jody, by this point, my pet peeve is that part of the fan base, and it's not everybody, but that part of the fan base that only wants positivity at all times and no, wants no criticism and wants no difficult questions. I, I don't get you people. It's the most depressing part of my job that you expect us to do that. And if we don't do it, you don't like us. It's absurd. You don't understand the first thing about journalism. And, and by the way, Jody, when I get on social media and I'm talking to, I don't know, a doctor or, or a lawyer, I don't pretend to be an expert about those professions. Everybody's an expert on reporting and journalism. And it's pretty evident from your first sense, you don't have a damn clue of what people in journalism do. So don't talk about it like you're an expert. Right. There, uh, that's here, my pet peeve. You, you kind of, I think you answered your own pet peeve question. The answer is social media, that there is so much of it out there and so many people on it that when you have a fan who is Mr. Positivity, wants to wave the pom-poms, wants to only think about the good things for the team that they root with, they can find it. There is someone yeah. on social media who's going to go down that road with the same mindset that they have, and they think that that's great. God forbid someone like yourself, a journalist, should try and do fair and balanced reporting, which means you're going to get the good with the bad. Oh, they don't like that. You hold no. yourself to certain standards that others on social media throw right out the window. No, no, no. We're here to root and cheer and only look at the upsides for our hometown team. That's no. why there are so many people out there. Because it used to be, if you were like this 25, 30 years ago, if you were one of those uh, put the team colored glasses on kind of fan and only saw it through the team colored glasses. Well, you were by yourself. Now you've got legions of others who oh think just God. like yeah. you do on that social is. media. And we're going to rally and shoot down a guy like John McClain. Cause how dare he say the Eagles aren't going to be a winning team this upcoming year. He shouldn't have the job he has. We here on social media should be the ones who have the job because we're back in the hometown team. And I, 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 I do different. want to say there are still people who value objective work, and I'm thankful for those people. I'm very thankful for those people because I, I still think they're m the majority. But they don't complain because all they want is information, and all they want is to learn about the team. I'll use Jamie Newman as an example. There was a group of fans uh, stunned, absolutely stunned, Jody, that the Eagles would cut – an undrafted kid who they gave no guaranteed money in June because, you know, they're getting smoke blown up there, you know what, from the draft site saying, oh, this kid was great, this kid was this, he opted out, he should have been drafted, blah, blah, blah. And by the way, I agree, if he went to Georgia and he played, he's probably getting drafted. He probably right. screwed himself by, by opting out of last season. You know, he had family issues, so you understand why. But that's why those decisions are difficult, because you have to weigh them. And it really affected his future in this league. Now, again, he's an undrafted guy with no guaranteed money. He's already cut in June. But you had a group of fans that are just like, oh, my God, how do you cut Jamie Newman? He's undrafted. They didn't give him one penny to come in here. He was the easiest cut in the world which we didn't actually know about, or at least I didn't. Maybe you did. Did you know that he got zero guarantees? Because yeah. most of these undrafted free agents, yeah. they get some guaranteed money. Not a lot, but some guaranteed money, and some get more than others, and some just basically, like we found out Jamie Newman does, get nothing. You get your yeah. uh, uh, off-season salary to show up for these uh, mini training camps, these OTAs, and that's it. If they cut you so sad, uh, too bad, you're done. Uh, I had no idea that that was the case because it wasn't reported when he immediately signed. Maybe some of you guys came up with that information. 
after the fact, but I didn't know that he was, and it tells you that there probably wasn't that much competition for his services. If there was another team that wanted him as much, if not more than the Eagles, all they had to do was put a couple 10,000 on uh, the table for guaranteed, and he probably would have signed there. Um, couple, well, a couple things, not necessarily, because it's very one of the positive things about being an undrafted free agent is you can pick where you want to go. So I think Jamie probably looked at the landscape and said, who needs a quarterback? And I'll go into Philadelphia. So he might have gotten a little bit of, you know, when we're talking about signing bonuses with undrafted guys, for instance, the, the most money the Eagles gave anybody was Jack Stoll, the tight end, about 115000 I think it was, somewhere in that range. Um, that's the kind of money you're talking about. That's a lot of money for an undrafted free agent. Uh, Tavon Grimes, who they also – Waved, but waved him with an injured designation, got $82,500. So those are sort of higher level uh, undrafted free agent signing bonuses. That was the top of the Eagles budget, so to speak, for undrafted free agents. But in Jamie's case, I don't know. It's not, I'm not saying he did get other offers. I'm almost sure he probably did. Somebody would have gave him twenty thousand dollars to come in at least probably but he probably looked at the landscape and said oh felt up he only has Jalen Hurts and Joe Flacco they need a third quarterback even if it's going to be a, a a practice squad guy so let me let me let me roll the dice there didn't work out my point is Jody it could be something as simple as I don't know falling asleep in a meeting not paying attention when you when when you can literally cut a guy and there's nothing, nothing there, it's never a surprise when, when you're talking about uh, a salary, even a hundred thousand, even somebody like Jack Stoll, you say, Oh, I wish he would have worked out. I wish he would have stuck around at least on the practice squad. The Eagles have no reason to keep, keep Jamie Newman around. I have no idea why he got in the doghouse, so to speak, no idea why he couldn't make it to, to training camp with a team that needs it, the bare minimum, uh, a camp arm must have done something. But um, that my my larger point is there is an entire group of people absolutely stunned that the Eagles would move on from Jamie Newman because well, why? Because they got the smoke blown up their ass for uh, three months. Well, then guilty as charged because I did a little, little of that because when I talked to guys like Rick Saratello, who was on with us earlier this week, and he tells me this kid is a talent that unfortunately we didn't get a chance to see him because he opted out, but uh, he's got the skill set. He could actually make it in the league. Oh, I'm going to share that with Eagle fans here on Birds 365, and when he doesn't make it through the OTAs, yeah, I got to say, sorry about that, guys. Now, uh, again, I understand the intricacies of no salary, no bonus, no reason to keep him if he's not holding up the expectations in these little camps that they're going to have. It tells you how bad he actually was. And, yeah, my reporting on it might not have been up to snuff either. But, uh, again, well, moving, no, on, moving on, not, oh, my God, what the hell are the Eagles thinking? The, the, the sky is falling. You guys who said he could play, how dare you get our expectations? It's not that big a deal. No, if if Jeff big. Newman goes somewhere else and becomes a quarterback, then you can get on the Eagles case for having cut him, and you can call yeah. back here on Birds 365, get on our stream and say, see, Jody Mack, you got off the bandwagon. We told you all along he was a great player. How bad did this kid have to be for the Eagles to be paying him nothing, no guarantees, and they only have three quarterbacks in camp? Three. That's it. Not four, not five, because some teams have more. I think at one time – the Texans had like, because they have this Deshaun Watson issue, had five guys under contract playing the quarterback position. Eagles only had three, and now they're down to two. So, you know, they're going to immediately start the search for guys to come in and be able to throw passes in preseason camp. <clears throat> you need guys who can just get you through the yeah. drills in yeah. camp. Don't know who that's going to be, but if Jeff Newman wasn't good enough to stay here under those conditions, there's got to be something really wrong with him. Well, there's probably two different avenues. The negative one would be, I, I say this all the time, Jody. I say um, you can't make the team in the spring, but you can make sure you don't make the team in the spring. So that kind of defines Jamie Newman 
and where he ended up with the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, how did he end up there? I find it very hard to believe in the actual drills that he was so bad uh, that they said, all right, we're going to move on. So I, I tend to think it would probably be more the the other stuff, the meetings, listening to coaches, whatever, doing what you're supposed to be, being a good practice player, being a professional. A lot of guys struggle with that, especially early in their career. That's my guess, but that's just – uh, speculation because you don't do much. You don't do enough in the spring to say, okay, this guy is just completely not ready to be an NFL quarterback. Or I will say door number three, maybe the Eagles have somebody already in mind that that's on the street. And they say, this guy's going to be a little bit better for us. Remember it's a third quarterback. It's not that important more than um, more than anything. It's just going to be a camp arm. You probably want four quarterbacks to be honest. Um, to, to especially when you have Joe Flacco, by the way, as a, a veteran backup is 36 years old. You don't want Joe Flacco throwing 100 pitches, so to speak, in training camp in case you need him. You don't want that dead arm early in the season. You want to protect him. With Jalen Hurts, obviously a young guy, it's not that big of a deal. But with Joe Flacco, it is a big deal. So, you know, it could be one of those three doors if you want to let's make a deal. But I see this all the time in the NFL. We know because of the hype, Jody, uh, the hype around the draft and everybody gets played up, and I see it all the time. And even coaches are excited. I'm excited to look at, you know, this fourth-round pick, this fifth-round pick. And then they get to the camps and they go, oh, oh God, oh, God, this guy's not ready. We're going to have to go to a veteran, you know, get Howie on the phone. Please get me this. Please get me that. Happens all the time. Happens yeah. all the time. There's a couple guys I would like to ask some questions to, not that they're available, but uh, Nick Sirianni made a big deal about the fact that, hey, with no combine, we did so much more homework with Zoom meetings with these players. There's no time restriction. We can get a guy on a computer and we can talk to him for two hours. We can play 100 games of rock, paper, scissors, and I can really get to know that young man. Well, who the hell met with this kid if you're right that his issues aren't physical, aren't skill-related, that there's something above and beyond that? Eh, shame on the Eagles for that one. And number two... Yeah, it's not that big of a deal, though, Jody. It's, you know, you're talking about the 90th guy on the roster. You know, if you look at what happened yesterday, Khalil Tate got waived as well. So you're looking at Khalil Tate. Trevon Grimes had knee surgery, so he put him to the side. Uh, because he got injured, and they're probably going to work out an injury settlement. But Khalil Tate and, and Jamie Newman, you're probably talking about the 89th and 90th guy on the roster. I mean, no, coaches aren't going to get in trouble. You take a flyer on a guy like that, you don't pay him one cent of guaranteed money. You say, oh, this kid's not going to work out. Let's turn the page. Let's move on. All right, then the other guy I'd like to talk to is his agent. I'm assuming he has an agent. How do you not prepare your kid to go into a ca- – uh, Jamie, I know you and I talked before the draft, and we thought you might be a third-round pick or a fourth-round pick or a fifth-round pick, and no one took you. We went to the NFL. Seven rounds, nobody took you. And we decided to go to Philadelphia for no guaranteed signing bonus money. And then you go in there, and you can't follow rules and regulations enough to be able to keep them, have them keep you through camp? What the hell did you do, kid? That's well, question. and again, that was just speculation. I'm not saying Jamie didn't follow rules. Well, well, come on, hey, Johnny, you got to make a call here. It was no. either that he acted well, like I said, an idiot it could be. or he can't play. Which one do you think it is? They no. take a stance here, buddy. Uh, well, I said door number three. They probably have another quarterback already on the line they're going to oh, really? bring in that they say that they like better than Jamie Newman. That's the third door. That's probably the most likely door. They just. They just rotate people three at the bottom of the roster and say, this guy can't play. This guy might be able to play. This guy can't play and move on. You churn. Every team does it. That's my point about this whole thing. You have this social media uproar about Jamie Newman. He's the 90th guy on the freaking roster. It doesn't matter. That is my ultimate point. All right. Then I'm ultimately going to ask you any insights as to who the guy sitting out there on the scrap heap may be Watson. that the Eagles <laughs> no. prefer to bring in here no. that, well, that, think, that somewhere between 85 and 90th guy on the roster who cocks it back and throws it that uh, the Eagles may be signing in the next 24, 48, 
72 hours? Actually, they don't have to because we got four weeks before yeah, they you do got, anything. You got a long time. Um, you mentioned Houston. You know, we all joke about Deshaun Watson, but they have 57 quarterbacks. So maybe they know they're going to release somebody. They're going to pick somebody up on waivers. So, you know, how he's on the phone. There are guys you never heard of uh, that they might bring in, the Ben DiNucci's of the world, the K.J. Costello's of the world that you see become third quarterbacks around the league. You know, it's going to be somebody like that. It's not going to be a splash. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be a third or fourth quarterback that probably doesn't belong in the NFL. That's just the reality of it. Uh, ben DiNucci and Eagle Green. That's what everybody wants. Well, no, he's it. still on the Cowboys. Ben. Is I'm he still on the him. Cowboys? After that, they didn't, they didn't release his. You know no, what? He's still there. There's no need to. I don't think. That's ridiculous. All right. Uh, it's the Mac and Mac guys here on Birds 365. Let's bring another Eagle reporter into this conversation. Martin Frank from the Wilmington uh, Journal News is going to join us a little later. Russell Baxter, a uh, good friend of mine, has been covering the National Football League for decades. As a matter of fact, uh, he's going to hop aboard with us. So we got a lot yet to do right here. I'm Birds 365. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.